Welcome to Paranormality Magazine. Each week, Paranormality Magazine explores all Fortean subjects, from phantoms to UFOs and every cryptid creature in between. Each week, you're treated to a collection of well-researched and investigated stories, interviews, and reports on cutting-edge paranormal projects and topics they know you crave. And here in the podcast, I share stories from the magazine to give you just a taste of what you receive in every issue. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Paranormality Magazine. In a recent story shared by a Missouri man named Jerry, a captivating encounter with a mysterious creature has stirred intrigue and wonder among locals. The incident, which allegedly occurred in 1974 or 1975, has remained etched in Jerry's memory, prompting him to share his extraordinary tale on the Sasquatch Theory YouTube channel a few months ago. Jerry, an Air Force veteran residing in the picturesque Missouri Ozarks, precisely north of Willow Springs, recounted an incident that unfolded in a mere 30 seconds, but left an indelible mark on his young mind. At the tender age of 11 or 12, Jerry found himself lying in bed, only to catch sight of an unusual spectacle outside his open window, a towering silhouette that sent shivers down his spine. Estimating the creature's height to be nearly 10 feet, he was gripped with fear, unable to move. Reacting swiftly, Jerry summoned his father, who rushed to his aid with a shotgun in hand. However, by the time they reached the window, the enigmatic visitor had vanished into the Missouri night. Despite the passing decades, the memory of this encounter has haunted Jerry, leading him to share his story and unburden his long-held secret. Jerry firmly believes that the creature meant no harm, deeming it merely curious. He speculated that a source of light inside the room might have attracted the mysterious being's attention. Moreover, he revealed that his region had seen numerous peculiar reports of similar encounters over the years, fueling further curiosity about the existence of elusive creatures. Was this truly a rendezvous with the mythical Bigfoot, the legendary Sasquatch, or perhaps even the famed Momo? Jerry and his family staunchly maintain that something paranormal transpired that fateful night. While skeptics may question the veracity of such stories, Jerry's account has struck a chord with those who hold an unwavering belief in the unexplained and the extraordinary. Regardless of the creature's true identity, Jerry's revelation has provided him with a sense of relief and empowerment, the ability to share his otherworldly experience with a wider audience. As the allure of Missouri's dense forests and mysterious landscapes persists, so too does the fascination with the possibility that mythical beings might be hidden among the shadows, waiting to be discovered or forever remain an enigma. Here are a couple of Glitch in the Matrix stories from Paranormality Magazine. I saw inside the Matrix. One day, I was walking to work and all of a sudden had an urge to walk a different path than usual. I worked downtown in a big city. It was a strange spur-of-the-moment urge to walk a different way that changed my life forever. I turned into an alley I had never seen before. As I remember it, I made it about 15 feet or so when an actual glitch happened everything in my mind scrambled. I felt like I didn't have a body anymore, just that I was a semi-conscious entity floating through some weird dimension. All of a sudden, in the array of different colors and shapes, a vision came to me. It was a bunch of strange-looking people that, in my mind, resembled businessmen in suits. They looked startled and panicked that I could see them. One of the people made a quick movement and everything turned to black. When I regained normality, I was on a completely different street. It was the same street that I always used to walk to work. I felt sick and severely disturbed and depressed. 
I've never done any hard drugs, never experienced any hallucinations, never had anything like this happen to me. The weird thing is, when the glitch was correcting itself and I could see those people watching me like a caged animal, I had the feeling that I knew I was being controlled. It still bothers me very much to this day. My dream saved my life years after I had it. My dream was simple. I was driving down from the mountains back home with friends in the car after what I vaguely remember was a snowboard skiing trip. The conversation was, I suppose, the usual for a long car ride. I spy this and just stupid stuff. Then Smash Mouth's All Star came on. I remembered it because everyone started singing along. Speeding down the mountain and after signaling into the passing lane, all of a sudden a huge car wreck happens right in front of us. Happening so fast, cars smashed into each other and one of the cars involved rolling off the mountain over the divider. I was too close to avoid it, and so I pulled to the right, which caused the car behind us to plow into the side of us, rolling our car to the opposite side of the road. I remember just a fuzzy feeling upside down and just glancing around the car and just seeing my friends mutilated, just… it sends shivers down my spine to even think about it. I wake up and in tears, I was just so frightened and scared. It was so surreal. This is where the glitch begins. After years passing from the night of that dream, my friends and I decided to get together to plan a small trip to have a ski and snowboard day for the first snowfall. We knew a storm was coming, so we headed up the mountain. Good runs, fresh snow, it was overall a great success. We'd gotten exactly what we had come for. We packed our things and headed down the mountain. And it clicked. The same stupid car banter, I spy, and then Smash Mouth's All Star came on. It happened, it was in my nightmare. The wreck happened just as I remembered, but I didn't pull right as I did in my dream. I pulled to the left into the opposite lane and somehow just avoided it. Everything slowed down. It was like I was in my own world, and everything happened the same except for my actions. We pulled to the side of the road and called 911. I broke down. It was too much. I was again scared and shaking, but somehow that stupid dream saved my life. Do you live in the Detroit, Michigan area, or perhaps will you be visiting there in the near future? Are you looking for a few paranormal hotspots to keep you entertained? Well, here are a few suggestions. The Thorn Apple Valley Slaughterhouse Detroit's infamous Thorn Apple Valley Slaughterhouse is notorious for its haunting reputation. Even during the brightest hours of daylight, the interior of the slaughterhouse remains enveloped in an eerie darkness. Brave souls who have ventured into the abandoned building have recounted spine-chilling experiences, from unsettling noises echoing through its corridors to the unsettling sight of ethereal, mist-like figures that defy explanation. Furthermore, visitors have encountered peculiar occurrences involving their electronic devices, with reports of inexplicable malfunctions plaguing their cell phones and other gadgets within the slaughterhouse's haunted confines. The Kaju Café the Kaju Café has gained a reputation for demanding a resilient spirit from its diners. Why, you ask? It's because this establishment has become notorious for the frequent accounts of paranormal occurrences shared by its patrons. Guests often recount experiences of objects inexplicably shifting on their own, unsettling apparitions taking their seat at the bar, and peculiar sensations of being touched by invisible hands. One recurring presence that both staff and customers frequently encounter is believed to be the spirit of the café's late owner's mother. Elmwood Cemetery Detroit's Elmwood Cemetery, a cherished site for those seeking a chilling experience, holds a special place among haunted locales. This hallowed ground not only boasts a rich history as one of Michigan's oldest cemeteries, 
but also witnessed a harrowing chapter, the infamous Battle of Bloody Run, where British soldiers clashed with Pontiac's army. Amongst the somber gravestones, visitors have reported spine-tingling encounters with ethereal figures, seemingly remnants of long-departed soldiers. These spectral apparitions manifest, evoking the vivid memories of a tumultuous past and heightening the eerie allure that permeates Elmwood Cemetery. Historic Fort Wayne Fort Wayne may not have witnessed any raging battles, but it has garnered a reputation as one of the most haunted buildings in the region for various compelling reasons. Originally serving as a military site, Fort Wayne took on a new role during the challenging era of the Great Depression, providing shelter for numerous displaced Detroiters who had lost their homes. The fort's history is steeped in hardship and adversity, which undoubtedly contributes to the prevalent paranormal activity experienced within its walls. Adding to the mystique, the construction of the fort necessitated the excavation of an Indian burial mound, further intertwining the supernatural with its past. However, the majority of reports indicate that the apparitions haunting Fort Wayne are primarily those of the soldiers who once served there, lingering in ethereal form. Among the various areas within the property, the Visitor's Center stands out as a particularly haunted section, with paranormal occurrences frequently reported, particularly in the restroom. The Whitney The Whitney, a prominent residence in Detroit, holds a reputation as one of the city's most haunted places. Originally constructed by a local lumber tycoon during the late 19th century, this historic building has since been transformed into a renowned restaurant. Over the course of three decades, numerous visitors have shared chilling accounts of paranormal encounters within the restaurant's walls. Apparitions and inexplicable shadows have been frequently reported, leaving guests startled and intrigued. Astonishingly, there are even claims of a supernatural presence that defies human classification. Among the eerie incidents commonly experienced at the Whitney are sightings of ghostly figures, unexplained clattering of dishes in deserted areas, and peculiar rearrangements of place settings. These phenomena evoke a sense of mystery and capture the imagination of those who venture into the establishment. Adding to the allure of its ghostly reputation, the Whitney's historical past includes a brief period during which it served as a tuberculosis ward. Such historical context lends a plausible explanation for some of the reported hauntings, deepening the sense of intrigue surrounding this haunted location. Well, let me tell you about the ABCs of Alien Big Cats. No, this won't be a grade school lesson or incoherent rhyme from a Dr. Seuss book. We'll discuss this phenomenon of alien big cats, or ABCs, in the cryptid research field. These sightings occur from Europe to North America, and the cats range between all types of big cats. By definition, big cats are only a few species – lions, tigers, leopards, and jaguars. They all have a special bone in their throat called a hyoid, which allows them to roar. How or why are these massive cats seen in places they shouldn't be seen or haven't been in centuries? In the 1960s, it was very fashionable for well-off people to buy and house exotic pets. This ranged from emus, hippopotamuses, aardvarks, and even big cats. It still exists to a degree where legal, Mike Tyson was infamous for his tiger, and Michael Jackson had his pet chimpanzee named Bubbles. Big cats were more appealing to some because they were dangerous, and some species have a reputation for eating humans when they feel like it. Two lions, known as the Savo man-eaters, reportedly consumed between 28 and 135 people, depending on who and when you asked. Stories like this one, and many others, contribute to the fear people have toward these animals, only intensifying the curiosity some people have about them. In 2011, a man in Zanesville, Ohio, ended his life. Still, before he did so, he released every animal he had housed on his property, essentially unleashing a zoo on the unsuspecting town. 
the police responded by killing most of them, capturing only a small percentage. They reasoned that they resorted to this because they had nowhere near the number of animal control officers to capture them all. How many animals were there? Fifty. Eighteen Bengal tigers, seventeen lions, six black bears, three cougars, two grizzly bears, two wolves, a baboon, and a monkey. The state of Ohio enacted a law on January 1, 2014, preventing dozens of species from being owned as pets, largely due to this story. Many people reason that the big cat sightings are simply them escaping their confines to the freedom of nature or being let loose by an owner who can no longer afford or wants to take care of them. This same issue has happened in Florida due to the reptile and fish trades being largely unregulated. Some states still have no restrictions against pet ownership, including the home state of Brandon Wills, the person who wrote this article, West Virginia. He saw an alien big cat during the autumn of 2007. It terrified him so much he didn't return to the woods for a very long time. To this day, he can still picture that encounter, and it's why he decided to write this article. He would like to know what they are, how they got there. I heard tales from friends of mine of seeing these cats with cubs, and if so, the population is growing. If that's the case, a live one will eventually be brought in. If you talk to any of the local DNR, they say we don't have resident big cats, that they are simply following the deer for food. They acknowledge that we do have the deer population to sustain them, yet won't say they are staying here. I cannot understand why there is such hesitation. Are they afraid it would hurt the tourist market? Other possibilities remain if the alien big cats are not just released or escaped pets. Panthers are not a separate species, but a melanistic variety of other big cats like jaguars and leopards. Melanin is a pigment necessary to make darker colors happen in fur or skin. What witnesses could be seeing is a melanistic mountain lion. According to academic records, a black mountain lion has never been killed in the wild or bred in a zoo. Another possibility is that black jaguars are coming up from Mexico. There have been a few official sightings of them roaming the wilds of Arizona and Texas, and big cat hunting ranges can sometimes stretch for hundreds of miles. So, I don't believe it's too much of a stretch to say that they're wandering that far for the food supply. Until the 1800s, jaguars were all over the southern half of the U.S., so we know they could still thrive there. While the skeptics dismiss all the sightings as scared people in the woods seeing stray house cats, I have to argue against that. I have a black house cat. His name is Spooky, and I call him my mini panther. He's quite large for a house cat, but is still nowhere the size of what I saw. I've spent a lot of time in the woods, and I could tell if something was simply an ordinary pet. To end this, I'll tell you of my own sighting, and this is actually the author Brandon Wills giving his story. It was the fall of 2007, and we were temporarily living with my aunt. I go into the woods to get out of the noisy house for a while, and because it was the only place in that area I could get reception on my Motorola Razor. I'd go up there, never unarmed because of the black bear, hike briefly, then sit and enjoy nature. This time, though, I noticed all the squirrels were going insane, barking alarms to one another from the treetops. I thought it was just me, because sometimes they do that if you startle them. This time, though, they just suddenly stopped. Any experienced outdoorsman or hunter knows that this means a real predator is nearby. I prepared myself for a possible black bear encounter, but I first saw a doe running across the hillside, maybe a hundred feet above me. It ran around the ridge, and I didn't see it again. Moments later, I saw a black shape from the corner of my eye. It was moving slowly, taking its time. I thought to myself, there's the bear. It moved along a thick patch of brush, then wandered to a grove of trees to my right. I turned and saw the black shape between the trees. Then I saw the tail. It was curved into a J-shape, hanging low to the ground. The creature had a large head, yellow eyes, and a pink tongue hanging from an open mouth. It turned to look at me, examined me for a few moments, then turned and walked over the hillside toward where the doe had run. 
Years later, I learned that mouth-opened gesture is how they taste the air for blood. I've concluded that I witnessed this creature about to eat its dinner. My question to all of you is this. Have you also seen one? Now you know that you aren't the only one. You can contact me by going to wildandweirdwv.com and clicking the Sightings tab to send us your report. We'd love to hear about it. We can also keep it confidential if you choose. Just remember, you're not alone. Want more Paranormality? Subscribe to Paranormality Magazine, and each month get it delivered digitally or via mail in our print version. Paranormality Magazine is a collaborative endeavor featuring works from people like you who have a passion for all things mysterious and unexplained. Our goal is the pursuit of knowledge, gathering captivating stories from our own team of writers, researchers, and investigators, as well as from writers such as yourself. Each monthly issue also includes a list of paranormal, horror, UFO, and cryptozoology events around the country, incredible paranormal-themed artwork, articles and writing sent in from our readers, suggested books and podcasts to consume, and more. Visit ParanormalityMag.com and subscribe today for as little as $3.99 a month. That's ParanormalityMag.com. ParanormalityMag.com. Paranormality Magazine presents Creatures of Cryptozoology, The Djinn. Powerful and shape-shifting creatures, the, the Jinn possesses free will and a complex nature. They are not inherently good or evil, but have the capacity free for both. Like humans, they experience emotions, possess intellect, and can make choices. choices. While some Jinn are benevolent and supportive of humans, others can be, can be mischievous, malicious, or even malevolent. Jinn possesses incredible, incredible supernatural powers, such as telepathy, teleportation, superhuman strength, and, and the ability to grant wishes. Sighting, sightings? At a boarding school in the Middle East, a bully broke, broke a student's necklace. As soon as that happened, the girl started to speak in a male voice while her, while her body contorted in strange positions. It said it was a jinn and, and had traveled from a faraway place. Simultaneously, the bully's tongue swelled and almost prevented her from breathing. The parents apparently knew their daughter was possessed by a jinn, had gotten the necklace from a shaman that told them it would hold the jinn in. Creatures of Cryptozoology from Paranormality Magazine What if the location is haunted by something that refuses to be defined? Is it our brain or our humanity that wants a haunting to be the spirit of a fellow person, a person that we feel like we can connect with? Sometimes places can be haunted by something that almost seems to mimic humanity almost in mockery of those who live there. Billy White brings us the story about the unearthly encounters of her parents' property. My parents bought their property, the property where my mother continues to live, back in about 1969. My older sister was approximately two years old. They were a very young married couple starting out together. My mother was about 20 and my father 24. My father had entered the marriage with a daughter from a previous relationship who was now about seven. They purchased five acres with a small two-bedroom home sitting right in the middle of the property. My father said he always wanted the five acres since he knew that they would never have next-door neighbors. The original house burned down in 1993, and my parents rebuilt a new house on the property. I honestly don't know exactly when my parents started experiencing different supernatural encounters on their property. I know that some of my father's stories about the property were from the early 1970s, so it must have started fairly soon after they purchased it. 
Whatever is there is not shy and has made its presence known in a wide variety of ways. Probably the most unsettling are the sounds that are heard in the mesquite trees at night. The two most common of these are a baby crying and laughter. I've only heard the baby cry a couple of times in my life. The first time I heard it stands out the most in my memory, probably because of the repercussions that I faced afterward. I was approximately nine years old or so. There was a church potluck that evening, and my sister and I were bringing pies to my mom. My sister had asked me to carry some of the pies and put them in the car. After I had sat the pies on the back seat of our dad's old Mustang, I distinctly heard a baby crying nearby. It was definitely a baby in distress. The nearest neighbors were acres away. We couldn't hear anything from their house. I panicked, but not out of fear of the supernatural. I was sure that there had to be an abandoned baby out in the mesquite trees somewhere. Without thinking, I immediately ran into the house to get my sister. I didn't even stop to close the car door. By the time I got my sister to follow me out to the car, the family dogs had gotten in and destroyed the pies. I was in enormous trouble. I explained to her and to my parents what I had heard. That was when I found they had all heard the baby cry at some point. No one knew what it was, and it had been going on for years. In fact, it hasn't stopped. When I last spoke to my brother about it, he said that he'd heard it not too long ago. A crying baby isn't the property's only trick. Whether or not it is the same being, there is something that laughs while staying hidden in the mesquite trees as well. Just like the baby, the laughter only comes at night and when someone is alone outside. The laughter can be a soft chuckle, or sometimes it is louder and more sinister. I admit that in the daytime, or with the lights on, laughter and a baby crying might not sound scary. But place yourself in the middle of nowhere, with no street lights, no traffic, no neighbors. It is nighttime and you have to go outside. As you walk out to the car or to check on something, you hear it. Maybe it is a baby crying where there should not be a baby. Maybe it's someone laughing, someone who must be there, in the dark, looking at you even though you can't see them. Whatever is there also doesn't only communicate through baby cries and laughter. As I said, my parents have been experiencing the supernatural at their property since the early 1970s. During this time, my father rode a motorcycle. One winter night, he woke up to remember that he didn't bring his helmet inside after working on his bike. Everyone thinks about the heat in Arizona, but they don't realize that in the winters, parts of Arizona drop below freezing at night. My father was afraid that his helmet might crack if he didn't bring it in, so he ran outside to grab it. However, the helmet wasn't hanging on his bike where it should be. Rather than going inside and going back to bed, he decided that it must have fallen off while he was testing his fixes on a ride in the empty acreage across the road. He thought that there was no way that it could be too far, so a quick ride out and he would have the helmet to be back in bed in no time. He was right. In just a few minutes, his headlights picked up the helmet laying on the ground. He stopped, got off his bike, and grabbed the helmet. Then, just like in a horror movie, the bike's engine cut off he was working to try to get it going again when he heard someone behind him clearly say, Bill. He figured that my mom must have woken up and realized that he wasn't in bed anymore and was calling his name from the front porch. He turned around towards the house only to realize that he had gone much farther than anticipated. There was no way he would have been able to hear her calling him from that distance. He was alone. He was alone yet someone had clearly said his name. He worked as fast as he could to get the bike going, and as soon as it started, he raced home without looking behind him. Whatever entities haunt my parents' property do not remain outside. Many of us have had unexplained experiences inside the house as well. Some were rather small signs, almost like a signal letting us know that we weren't alone. One night I was babysitting my younger siblings. At this time my parents had a chime on the back of the front door consisting of four strings and small wooden weights that would hit them melodically when the door closed. The younger kids had gone to bed, 
and I was in the living room watching TV. Suddenly, just one of the strings made one single response, as if the weight attached to it had been lifted and dropped once, but then stopped before it could bounce. There is no way that this could have been the wind, since the noise was only one chime and stopped immediately. It also couldn't be movement from the door for the same reason. However, this experience was quick and almost a hello compared to a terrifying experience that my brother had when he was a teenager. In the early 2000s, I was living in the same town as my parents, but I lived in town proper with my sister and my young son. Since we were close in proximity, our younger siblings often spent time at our small home, especially if our parents were out of town. This was the case one evening in approximately 2001. My younger brother was debating between staying with us or staying at our parents' home by himself while our parents were out of town for a few days. He decided to go to our parents' home to gather items so that he would not spend the night alone. When he came back to our house, he was shaking and nearly in tears. My sister and I sat down with him and I asked him to tell us immediately what had happened. As best I can remember, this is his story. When he pulled into the driveway, the house appeared to be completely quiet, which was natural since our parents had already left town. He went into the house and was doing a few things in the living room and kitchen area. He then heard voices and someone moving around back in our parents' bedroom. Not being afraid of confrontation, my brother headed straight to the back of the house to face the intruder head-on. However, when he got to our parents' room in the back of the house, no one was there and he had passed no one in the single hallway leading to their room. At this point, he heard voices in the living room, the room that he had just left. Now he was scared. It was impossible for someone to have made their way from the back bedroom to the living room without passing him in the hall. My brother still wanted to see what was happening. He figured there still had to be a natural explanation, right? He went straight back down the hallway to the living room. Again, he found an empty room, and again he experienced a repetition of the voices in the back of the house. My brother then decided that if there was something or someone in the house, it was clearly deliberately messing with him, and his best course of action at this point was to leave the house. He quickly grabbed what personal items he had nearby and went straight to the front door. When he grabbed the doorknob, it was so cold that moisture had condensed on it on a warm summer evening in southern Arizona. He raced out to his truck in the driveway and made his way to our home in town as quickly as he could. In fact, he was shocked that he had not had a car accident on his way as much as the experience had upset him. My brother and I spent many evenings talking about my parents' home. When I graduated from high school and moved out, he moved into my former bedroom. He said that he could never sleep in there. He was so bothered by the room that he moved back into his shared room with our other brother. Our baby sister eventually took the room and stayed in it throughout her school years. Our sister never reported seeing or hearing anything in that room. So does that mean that there's nothing there? Does the absence of proof mean that something doesn't exist? Does the fact that my sister didn't report anything negate my brother's experiences just because it is more acceptable? However, it was not only family members who reported seeing things at my parents' home. While I was in high school, I had a friend come over while my parents were not home. He happened to be a little bit of a clean freak and actually wanted to clean the living room while my parents were out. I'd gone in the back of the house while he was getting out the vacuum. When I came back in the living room, my friend calmly stated, I just watched a woman walk across your living room and through the wall. I asked him if he wanted to leave, but he responded, No, I think it was kind of cool. I'd never spoken to this friend about the weirdness of my parents' property or anything that anyone had ever seen or heard. My friend had a point. It is kind of cool. While there are some, like my brother, who see the presence there as something malevolent and dangerous, no one has ever really been harmed. There's absolutely no doubt that hearing a disembodied baby cry or laughter in the desert night is terrifying in the moment. But man, it does make for a cool story.
Thanks for listening to Paranormality Magazine. Get more information about the magazine and subscribe to our monthly publication at ParanormalityMag.com. That's ParanormalityMag.com. Or click the link in the show description. And if you're a researcher or investigator, send us your stories. We might feature you in our next issue. If you have a paranormal podcast, you can add it to our website so our readers can find your show. And artists, if you'd like your work to be featured in our magazine or on our back cover, contact us. Again, our website is paranormalitymag.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll have more paranormal for you next time from Paranormality Magazine.